You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. I think I needed drink, drink and drugs to be around other people, man. Like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I just wasn't... Like, I think that's why I don't like being in a pub or in big groups of people now because I'm like, I don't actually want to be there. Yeah. I needed the drink and drugs to turn me into a bit of a twat. Yeah. But the bottom line is, men are becoming weaker. We're at an all time low in testosterone. Like, mm. this is massive. Like, we're more depressed. Mm. We are mm. more lazy. Like, sex drive is down. Yeah. Like, we don't exercise as, as much. Like, the problem is women these days and this is very true i've experienced it myself women these days and and feminism has got to the point where even being supportive of other men pisses off women my dad uh, knew it was getting bad fucking in 2017 you know just before he died my dad said you're drinking too much um but you know um i think i think my dad would um uh he'd be proud now You've got to take the reins for your life, and anybody watching, man, things can get better, things can change, but they ain't going to change unless you admit you've got fucking problems. Sorry, that's making me a little bit fucking. But that that stuff makes me um that stuff makes me realise sort of how much shit I'm fucking out. Sorry, mate. That's okay, bro. That stuff sort of may, makes me realise how much shit I must have put her through with the drink and the drugs and that to see how happy yeah. she is now. So, but that shows you how much she loves you. Yeah. But if you've not got her, I'm going to be honest with you, man, you're probably dead. Yeah, mate, I think so. Do you know what I mean? Sorry. Boom, my man! <laughs> Today's guest, we've got my main man, Dapper Laughs. Would you say new and improved? Yeah, how are you doing, man? Good, mate. Really good. It's good, good to have you back on. Thank you very much. Is this the same place we recorded before that time ago? Is it the same? It's the same apartment block. It feels like a brass house. I'm just going to say it. Yeah, well, it is, but don't we'll wear, we'll wear that house. Uh, but, I mean, it's, it's, got to earn my money somehow. Everybody else is getting done for trafficking, mate. Why not me? Yeah, but um, no, it's good to be back, man. It's good to be back. And um, I've been trying to, just for your listeners and viewers, he's a tough man to pin down. I've been trying to get you on my podcast. I've been trying to get you on my podcast. And um, What is your podcast? It's, yeah, I might as well promote it while I'm here. It's uh, Menace to Sobriety, much inspired by your Self, both my sobriety and the podcast and I'm just interviewing people um, that inspire me that's why I've been trying to get you on especially about the sobriety route but fuck me I thought I was busy you're hard to pin down um, proper A-lister now but uh, I, um, I'm just interviewing inspiring people about being sober and how to get sober stay sober and, and techniques and the mentality and unconscious thinking and da 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 I had like a hypnosis expert that specialises in cocaine addiction at Kirk Norcross that you, you saw the clips on that he, Great clubs. He, yeah, he uh, he come on and spoke about his addiction. I mean, he was heavily into his coke, and it's unbelievable that I mean, I was I was in it with him back in the day, and it's unbelievable that he's sober. He's just someone you wouldn't think would be sober, and um, they're like counselling sessions for me, and they're just helping me helping me stay sober. Yeah, this is what it's about: therapy sessions, yeah. shooting the shit, and just talking about the pain, talking about the struggle. Yeah. I, I genuinely do believe men have become weaker. I put a post out actually on Twitter. I kind of I worded it wrong. If I'm honest, I says, um, why has men become weaker? I was asking the question, social media, drink, drugs, porn, or whatever. And then I says, what was I says? Something about with suicide at an all-time high. Something's not right. But people kind of getting the... Mm weak and suicide kind of I worded it wrong but and they the, thought they thought you meant suicide is weak yeah yeah, yeah. I was yeah. just trying to ask the question and kind yeah. of get a debate for a bit of understanding of yeah. so many things in life that make people struggle yeah. but yeah. the bottom line is men are becoming weaker we're at an all time low in mm. testosterone like, mm. this is massive like, we're more depressed mm. we're mm more lazy like sex drive is down yeah. like we don't exercise as, as much like yeah. we, we can't go on and on and, and we can create so many excuses mm. and we can tiptoe around that the bottom line is man ain't nothing changing unless you go off your ass and make the fucking waves yourself mm. and yeah. that's the thing I think I think that personally myself I set up that group men and um, men and their emotions where lads can post stuff on Facebook right and they can do it anonymously they can post what their problem is and people can reply to it and it opened my eyes everyone's going through their own shit right or well, most of people but a majority of men are, uh, and the, the the common thing that I'm seeing in there right is they've got some form of something they're doing in excess maybe whether it's fucking prostitutes shagging porn drugs gambling da -da, they're doing something in excess to escape and then 
when their world falls apart around them, their world falls apart and they lose everything because of that excess. Uh, they don't have the mental strength because they're burnt out to fix it. And that's where your suicide and stuff comes in. And I think that as men in general, we're constantly beaten up anyway by society, um, especially if you're like a white working class male. Um, you know, all you hear is that men are predatory, you know, that we're offensive for this, we're doing that, toxic masculinity. I think men, that's why Andrew Tate, I think, blew up so much. I think men in general feel a little bit like the world hates yeah. you. But we're looking for guidance. Yeah. Because my life is going great. Mm. I still fucking struggle. I've not struggled more now. Yeah. I just know how to handle it now. I've got the tools and techniques that... Do I lie in my bed and crying? Do I flick through social media looking for a bird? Do I see who sitting in a pub that I can go down and have a few pints with? Take a line again, pretend that I'm fine. A lot of the people who I speak to messages every day, people who are struggling. Mm. The majority of these people are taking drugs, drinking, yeah, watching yeah. porn, yeah. and don't work. Yeah. Smoking weed and just... And that's not the life and it's not mm. the bad. It's just all they fucking know. You know how hard that is. How many times you've been sober and then fucked it? Same as myself. Like mm. You were on the path. Yeah. And then you phoned me... I think after maybe it was your first night out or setting then I says look if you drink again you want to get sucked back in we went for a run went to the gym done some cold water yeah sure as fuck you went back yeah that was that was that was tough for me because I <laughs> I you know like you said before we started the podcast we're ego driven and it was you know I'd done six months sober and then my wedding was coming Christmas was coming and my stag do was coming and I was like I'm fine I've proved that I can go sober um and even you, you, you're you you're very in tune with me and most people you are anyway and, and I started getting you, you know your messages your voice notes and that saying how are you you're right da, da, da. you obviously were watching and a bit worried then you come down and saw me and when we were on the run I remember you said I can see it it's in you the drink's in you even though I hadn't been drinking that day but I had the night before and you're like once it's in you it's fucking in you and I was like I'll be fine I'll be alright and it was a matter of weeks before I was fucked wasn't it yeah you were dark you're, you're, you see in people's videos I see it a mile away yeah. I see who struggles I see like, even myself we, we create content that keeps yeah. us busy why do I try and help everybody else is it because I don't want to face mean fears my yeah. own demons because yeah, I've yeah. still fucking got them I know I still speak out a lot mm. and I'm still a working process but also know the results I'm doing look what I've achieved in four years it's yeah. not a blow my own trumpet this is a guy from a council estate mm. had fuck all skin back in his mum's house and I cracked then just fucking hating life I wasn't on the crack but I was bang on the charlie bang yeah. on the weed bang on the valium took the reins and done I need to change started working that process and just taking baby steps to then better my life but even though it's all smoke and mirrors like it's all the yeah. cheesy chat smoke and mirrors this and that but you can still have a productive life and still achieve something see when you were off it for six months what was the trigger to then have a drink for, uh, for me um, it was boredom it was boredom and it was uh, the, 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 what, the reason why I know it's different for me now is because the whole time that I was sober that time I still felt like I was missing out whereas this time around I feel like I'm free of it even though I know it's dangerous still, it's always dangerous, but this time, I'll tell you what it is, for anyone out there that's struggling right now with, um, like I never considered myself like an alcoholic or a drug addict, because I thought to myself, I'm not alcohol or drug dependent, right? I don't wake up in the morning and want uh, some coke, or I don't wake up and want to reach for a bottle of vodka, but I'd get pissed up two, three times a week, and I'd get on the gear maybe once a fortnight, or maybe once every weekend. Who knows? But what it meant was I was generally either always drunk or fucking hungover. Right? I was never at a base level, and I thought I suffered with mental health. I thought I had really bad anxiety and depression and that. But now that I'm sober, like 120 days or something, I get anxiety every now and then, like naturally, like people do when things happen. But I'm not depressed. I don't have that really bad mental health downturns like I was having with my alcohol. So I think that I got to the point where I started feeling feeling good and I was like do you know what I can go back and also I was just looking at life like it was a, I was still looking back at my heydays of drinking and doing drugs and missing it you know mm -hmm. and thinking I'll be all right to go back to it and just the drink though just the drink not the drugs just the drink and if I can go back to just the drink then I'm not going to be out all night I'm not going to be making stupid decisions I'm not going to fall out with the wife the the, the missus the wife now and it'll be alright but it was only a matter of weeks till I was back on the gear but this is a problem with negative energy you open the door to one the rest yeah. come flooding in and then you rip the whole ceiling down and then what happens is we lie we pretend we're fine yeah. we're okay and we've got that saying mm. it's okay not to be okay of course it is 
but it's not okay to fucking live there. There's got to come a time you've got to, because I say this all the time, no cunt is coming to save your ass. No. Not your mum, your no. dad, your missus, no. your kids. Fuck everybody else, because I'm on I give a fuck about no cunt. No, it's the same I, as me, and I just want to say, just while this is in my head, I think that he, that needed to happen to me. So I'll tell you why. I think that if you're wrestling with the thought that you've got a, a bad relationship with drink or drugs, then you definitely have, if you're even thinking that, right? And nothing will scare you more than going sober or giving up, right? And then thinking you can go back and then losing control because you've told yourself, I'm all right, I'll be able to go back and because I've proved it, nothing scares you more than being right in the mix of losing control again and going, I can't fucking do this. That's when you realise. Not the first time I think you try and stop. Do you know what I mean? I think mm. it's the second time yeah. or it would be a, it would be a certain point where you go back and you're like, I can control this. And when you can't and everything crumbles around you, I mean, I'm, I'm lucky I still got my kids and that. Do you know what I mean? I'm lucky that I'm still in my relationship. And I'll tell you what, I'm the happiest. This started off quite doom and gloomy, but I'm the happiest I've been. But fuck me, I, uh, you know, I'm terrified of, of, <laughs> of, of fucking it up. But it's always going to be there. Yeah, but I think about getting on it every day. Mate, I was down the train there and the old woman next day was having a red wine. I thought, that smells delicious. Yeah, I, mate, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie to you. I, my podcast is called Menace to Sobriety and majority of it uh, with certain people, I'm just talking about fucking sessions. I've had and da, da 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 and people online were going oh you're glorifying drug culture I'm like because it's fucking glorious when you're doing yeah. it if there's nothing to me there was nothing better than fucking having a good piss up with your mates having a, having a load of gear and fucking going wild and stuff like that but now I, I, to me I just I don't want my kids to look back and remember me hung over no. and plus I make so much positive progress when I'm sober so I just had to go through that pain I guess but you do scare me when I talk to you because when I talk to you you're like it's still there be careful it's yeah. around the corner it's like it's like a you know you need a reminder as well because we can get to a certain level where we think we've completed it you had the big car big house got married had the kids looking from the outside perfect life yeah. I seen your videos and I thought he's fat and fucking miserable yeah I was mate yeah. Oh my God, yeah, so true, yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's not to put you down, that's why I was saying your voice tones, like, get your head out your ass. Yeah, like, fuck it. And then, I, and then I used to say to you, in the gym, I said I said to you, man, right straight at the gym, I says, look, you're going to need to come to the conclusion you can't drink again. I see myself in you. Yeah, but you don't want to hear that at the time. Of course you don't, because we're weak. We're scared. Yeah. But weak, people have become so soft. We're living mm. in a very soft generation. It's quite easy to be successful now because everybody else is weak. Yeah, everybody right. talks a good game. You look at the guys on social media, how weak they are. Their negative comments, their hatred. What are they doing with their life? Mm. Like it's, it's embarrassing the amount of people who hide behind a screen and doing fuck all with our life. At least we're out trying. At least we're yeah. fucking trying to yeah. live and trying to be honest as we can be. Look, we're all out for ourselves. I always say, I've got an agenda to be the best man I can be to provide yeah. a life for my family that I yeah. never had. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But we can't forget the most important thing in life is time. Mm. I'm down here constantly working. I've got you on. We've yeah. got another podcast. I've got free tomorrow. I'm back yeah, up. Mate, those you with kids, you, yeah, you work it's non-stop. Fucking... But part of me thinks is that to keep away the demons. Whatever it is, it's working. Well, listen, we've got addictive natures, haven't we? Whatever yeah. we do, we've got to do in excess. In excess. But um, I think you're right. I, I wasn't ready to accept. I, you hear these cliches, you know, I wasn't ready to accept, but you talking to me, telling me that I'm not able to drink and stuff like that, I was looking at you and going, no, that's you, that's not me. Mm. That's you, mate, that's not me. But now I'm like, all right, that's us. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, yeah. I think, like, I've done a video, I didn't never posted it because I fucking teared up in it and I hate crying on social media, but I made a video the other day where I was just doing this video because I just wanted to say to men because my, my inbox is fucking filled full of men going off, uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a year sober, I'm six months sober, but I lost everything. I lost my house, I lost my missus. You know, you're, the, the woman that you're at home with now, uh, you know you're only doing them weekend sessions and stuff like that and staying out all night and doing whatever you're fucking doing, all them stupid decisions you're making. That woman right now that stood next to you and and is there, in their mind, they've, they're have they they're on their way out. They've had mm -hmm. enough. And at some point they'll leave. And if you've got kids, that's where I think the suicide comes in the most is when you finally come out of the cloud of whatever you're doing and you realise that your kids are going to fucking know what you've done or you know you've lost them that's where those suicidal thoughts are and I've done this video just saying like if you're in the midst of it now and you still have the things you care about around you fucking try and sort your shit out man because mm -hmm. I was so fucking close I'm still probably on the edge of you know it's still early days I'm only 120 days in but you know she's probably there going yeah it's alright mm -hmm. and that but yeah well, but it's a shame it's the guilt as a man yeah. that we shouldn't be yeah. vulnerable and weak and, yeah. and pretending that we're okay as a man you've got to take the reins you've got to yeah. take the reins of your life take the responsibilities mm. as fucking key and saying okay I've got problems here for me we talk about weak I talk about weakness but also to speak about 
You've that's got, strength yeah that's the strength yeah, yeah. the strength is saying that you're hurt the strength is saying that you've got a problem mm. saying you've got an addiction because there's so many people out there it's a white off your yeah. shoulders I mean I done the, the, the I done the try to do the 12 steps gambling NA but I, I hated the saying I am a compulsive gambler because I'm not I, I hate the saying I'm in recovery because I'm recovered mm. I'm not putting that out there at the universe like I'm still because mm, it yeah because I, oh, I'm, I, addict, I'm recovered you know. I'll still work it myself every day I don't, my eating's my problem Mm. fuck's sake eating shite because I, I, I'm nervous after a podcast I need to eat because I'm drained mm. but there's still so much to work on but I'm not I'm, yeah. I'm man enough not to shy away you also get diagnosed with ADHD did yeah, that yeah. help? Um, the idea getting diagnosed sent me a bit west really because I um, was that when you were on the madness? Yeah, well, do, do, do you know what the crazy? Oh, thing? you're looking for answers. Like, well, no, well, the, cra the, cra <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the crazy, the crazy thing is, the crazy thing is, I, I've learned so much about ADHD. Is 80 percent of people that are diagnosed with ADHD suffer addiction problems as well. Uh, they, they have like addictive personalities where you know we hyper focus on things, and also stimulants calm ADHD. So coffee calms down your ADHD, and ADHD is a form of fucking overthinking. It's like 20 thoughts at once, right? And it's like so. I, I do it constantly. I'll, I'll be maybe fucking tidy in the house or doing the house and I'll have an idea where I want to watch something. So I'll start watching it and then I'll change my idea that I want to do something else. And I can, I can be doing a full projects at once and sometimes none of them get finished. So you've got to stop and be like, fucking focus on one thing. It's hard. But creatively, it's amazing. But they give you a type of speed for it. It's like a speed. That's what it's like. It's like, it, it for, to other people, it makes them fucking... But so if you've got ADHD, it calms the fucking noise in the stand, the stimulant. So cocaine for me especially alcohol was uh, but cocaine especially for me was it would calm that shit down where normally it makes people chat shit 100 miles an hour and stuff like that I mean I've done a bit of that but it, normally in general it would fucking calm you know it would switch everything off for me but the next day this is where my problem was where my anger management went wrong and my mood swings went it comes back fucking tenfold so it's like a bomb has gone off in your fucking head but when I got diagnosed with the ADHD and they told me I had, I had ADHD, suddenly I realized that my way of thinking wasn't normal. I just thought that, I, that everyone was like that, trying to manage their thoughts and manage their projects and, and couldn't focus on things that are not interesting. If my missus, like the other day, my missus took me into the, into the, she was going to work and she said, look, this needs to be washed. So can you take that out and take that out? But I started looking at something on the top. She's like, the fuck are you looking at? I'm like, I don't care about the washing. I can't focus on it. I'm trying. I'm trying. Write it down. She had to fucking write it down for me. You know what I mean? But... It, it scared me really and I had a bit of a downturn because I, I realised I wasn't normal you know because you phoned me again I think that was the last straw that's when you realised you yeah, had to change snapped, yeah. the missus was leaving you I think you yeah. get the jail and whatever I don't know if you can talk about that but mm. um, because that then pushes you to suicide you've got two amazing daughters yeah. I, Listen, kids do my fucking head in. I've yeah, got you kids in a pet, you... man. Like, but when I see your video, your kids are going, looks like an amazing family. Mm. I see both daughters in you. Yeah. I see the silliness and the, mm. the love. And, because you're a soft cunt. Yeah, you're yeah. a loving guy. You're, like, if I'd phoned you, you, you would be there in a the heartbeat, I believe. But, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. Yeah, I reached out to you a few times. Yeah. Was, it, was that the last straw though when you fucked up? Yeah, so what, what really happened to me was everything was going fine. I thought was going fine. I went back to the drink over Christmas and, the, and then that turned into everything else. And it was like one thing after another. Do you know what I mean? It was like my stag do and then there was a blowout and that and then the wedding came. And I think the wedding, the, the, I had a lot of guilt and shame from the wedding because... Um, I got drunk, really drunk at the wedding and I don't remember some of it and it, and you know, there's pictures of my kids there and stuff like that. And this is only recent, you know, this is only about four or five months ago. And I thought, oh, I didn't spend any time with the kids, hardly any time with the, with the wife. And, and the guilt and shame from that on the honeymoon was horrific, but I was still drinking, trying to manage it. Um, and then, yeah, some bad stuff happened and I ended up getting nicked. I don't really want to go into too much of it, but I ended up getting nicked and, um, and that was when it was like, fucking hell, I've really got to sort my shit out now. So I said to my missus, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get on it anymore. But the next day I had to go to Marbella for my film premiere. My film would come out and it was premiering Marbella and she was coming with me, but I thought she weren't going to come because of, I got nicked and everything and we'd had a massive bust up. But she came to Marbella with me and I broke my promise as soon as we landed. And, um, and uh, that's when I realised I was out of control. But I still went the whole weekend, and she ended up flying home. Like I did not give a shit. And um, when I come back, I, that I was that was it. It was over. And uh, yeah. it's mad with you because look at all the shit you went through with Newsnight, and they, they, mm. you, you cancelled yourself. I always say that, but. Mm. 
all the shit you went through and then building it back and then yourself. you took the chance to yeah. even jeopardise that again that's yeah. fucking that's deluded thinking yeah, what yeah. where you yeah. look at it yeah. you've lost it all you were you're yeah. sitting crying suicidal phoning fucking Samaritans yeah. want to change your life and it you happened again that, yeah. and, and you it, flipped it so that's why yeah. you'll never be 100% yeah. cured that is why you've got to stay on it consistently yeah. and and t for me for me though the, for me you know the the beautiful the beautiful harsh reality of it is um you know i know now like f if i want my family if i want to be with my kids and my wife and you know we're, we're happy and we're, we're getting along you know she probably she probably always still worried that i'll go back obviously we've got a lot of work to do obviously but um i know for a fact now that if i went down that road again that i would lose that family unit and uh, and without my kids, I wouldn't really have a reason to stay sober. So I know how bad it would get. So as horrific as it was, um, it's kind of it's kind of put a fork in it for me. I'm like, this is serious shit now. Do you yeah. know what I mean? But I, look, since then, I've had nothing but good karma. Mm -hmm. Since I started the podcast and started openly, really talking about my addiction problem, and and for, for being in this industry, like being a comedian and making films, and now I'm back on TV and uh, you know doing doing bits. I've got great opportunities coming up. It's scary talking about drug use because brands and platforms and stuff like that they don't want to work with people that. Uh, associated with drugs but i just really thought that if i don't if i'm not fucking open and honest about it uh, how can that help do you know what i mean and i feel like that's the karma that i've got to put back out there yeah. do you know what i mean see i feel as if that's that people are not ashamed into hiding their past but i get yeah. more offers and more sponsors than fucking anybody and i'm i'm blatantly honest about my past yeah. that you'd be surprised that how many people can relate when you're open and honest because we all paint my life is all rosy and rainbows but it's not the case mm. everything's always there's always still outside pressure there's always still outside noise like like i know i've not got another recovery in me that's why i can't drink that's mm. why i can't even have a sip of beer even at christmas day there was non-alcoholic stuff and i thought i'm too scared to drink that just in case just in case that's non-alcoholic beer like I just, I know how precious life is and I know how sad it can be and I know how sad people are. Like yeah. So many people are fucking sad and d depressed and miserable and suicidal and just lost. Like, mm -hmm. What do you think that is for your, for your side of things? I think it's because, you know, we're not, I, well, especially if it, I learned a lot about the actual alcohol. Like if, if, if you drink one drink, you get a certain amount of anxiety. But if you're having another drink straight away, it hides the anxiety. And then if you keep drinking, whatever, it will disappear and then it will come back tenfold. If you're constantly working, you, you're like, it's like you're lowering yourself with the drink and then you're trying to recover and you're, you're never quite normal. And I just think people are down because there's no future for some people. They don't see a future and they're not working on positive things, you know. Like, I know for a fact that I won't have a really good day unless I get up and work out in the morning. So I have to do it every day now. And I know it's like I force myself into having a positive day. That's like my thing and it works. But a lot of people don't know that maybe or they don't trust that. They don't know any well-being stuff and they just kind of accept that it's shit. How much has comedy saved your life as well? Yeah, man, it's 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 my it's my it's, it's escape. It's That's my, your drug, do you think? Yeah, definitely, definitely, and it's the only thing I'm good at. So, and I'm about uh, to say that, man. I, I say you're a good fan on that as well. You, you get many positives. Listen, we can all fucking. This is the thing about people like us. We can put ourselves down a lot. Mm. I'm at that stage. I'm not putting myself down anymore. Mm. I'm done. Yeah, I know how successful I can be. I know how hard I work, and I know the good I bring into the world as well. So. People need to understand words are powerful. Yes, you're right. No, you are right. It's one of the one of the things that I'm good at, and it's yeah, I love comedy. Listen, sometimes I push it too far. Recently, I've I've been skirting along the line a little bit, but I love that. That means you're back. Yeah, and honestly, like I don't feel the need to post. You know, we were talking about that before. That need, mm -hmm. you know, that addiction to get the attention and validation. Yeah. I don't feel that anymore. I wait till something funny comes into my head, and then when it does, I'm there. But I love it, man. I love being that. I love I love entertaining people and taking the piss. Because when you were selling the beer, mm. I thought, how can you how can you talk about so bad like being sober? Yeah, and, that's why I had to give the company. Up, man. You know what I mean? Like, and I was making fucking money from that man. Yeah. So, but that was a moral. That was a moral thing, you know. You, you know, I could have still been selling it now. That that company was turning over money. My business partner was like, "What do you mean you're going sober again? Are you sure?" <laughs> like, He's so, probably trying to feed you that yeah. so he can keep you working. Fed <laughs> whisk in your coffee. Yeah, but I was like, "I'm out, mate." What about the company? I said, "You can uh, have it and crack on or whatever." But I'm I'm not selling the beer now. Morally, I, I couldn't. Do you know what I mean? Same as myself. I get big offers from. 
Uh, gambling products and mm-hmm. alcohol. I thought about it. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to Gambling's lie. a big I one, thought, isn't it? Yeah. Everything I speak out against, for me to then be promoting gambling, but it's I'm talking armor. mega money, mega money. Mm. Do this and I thought, I did go home and I thought, fucking hell, that would set my kids up. And I thought, nah, that's me selling myself. Like, stay true to you. I built a mm. brand, I built a platform. Like, just stay to you. Like, offers will come and offers have came. So I've been lucky yeah. enough, not as, as much as the, the, the more destructive but brands. They've got the most money, ain't they? Bastards, man, ain't yeah, they? They, they can have you by the buzz. Yeah. What do you think of the Sam Smith stuff? I've been fucking slaughtering him lately, but. Uh, listen, people think oh, I see, I see you. T- I love your Twitter, man. Uh, I see it, but, but it's just I ain't yeah. got a problem with nobody. No, I listen, I show anybody, it. and you've got Sam Smith. Like his ass is getting—he's pretending to blast the ass off something. I'm yeah, using video. My and stuff getting, is 18 and, and getting peed on and shitting yeah. in all the demonic, fucking satanic shit. Like we can go yeah. down the, the conspiracy route, but it's pl- in plain sight. Yeah. It's there. But right, so listen, I've been I've been doing pieces on uh, this geezer called Jeffrey that's online, and he's um, he's uh, he identifies as non-binary, but he dresses as a woman and identifies as non-binary, and he creates content for his towards kids, right? So he's like, he, seen them? Yeah, yeah. You know, go and ask your mum and dad what gender you are, and when they respond negatively, it's because they want you to conform to shit. And I'm like, right, so what you're doing? is you're fucking grooming kids here. You're, you're talking to kids and that scares the fucking life out of me. I don't personally care what anyone wants to do uh, with themselves. If you want to dress as a woman or if you want to be gay, bi, gender neutral, identify as a fucking baby in a prison and get fed fucking like that geezer or whatever, that is fine. But as soon as you start pushing that shit on my kids, yeah, then then that that that's that's where I step up and I will fucking make content about it and I have been. He even done a video the other day where he was like, he, he was like he, he identifies as non-binary but he's like a 45 year old geezer right in makeup and he does a video where he goes statistically it's middle aged men that are paedophiles so I can't be one I'm like you're a fucking geezer mate yeah. you know what I mean but anyway but we're not allowed to say that even though I've just said it we're not allowed to say that because it's non-binary which I find just fucking weird right yeah. but I'm more than prepared to call, call, call that shit out because I'm allowed to have an opinion but the problem is if you're white especially white working class m- man like if you're like us your opinion on that stuff is automatically offensive doesn't matter it's automatically offensive i agree with you on the sam smith stuff you know what i mean like uh, but the problem is if i start tweeting about it or writing about it then i'm homophobic or i don't even know is he gay or bisexual i'm not even sure like yeah, he, he's, he's confused he's that fucking 40 year old baby now mate like yeah I don't care anymore. I don't fucking care. I've got to say my opinion. I've got kids. I yeah. do everything to protect my kids. Yeah. You ain't going to be prancing about in a brand pants, pretending to shag somebody and 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 people trying to normalise it. For me, there's two genders. If you want to be a he, she, P, D, fucking unicorn, be who you want to be. Just don't do it around my kids. Drag queens, stay the fuck away from schools. Yeah, stay out of schools. Stay yeah. out of schools, Who man. Who suggested 18 that? plus, like you see these people, the guy had the microphone pretending it was a dick with a kid talk. Stop that weird pedophile fucking... But the, pro- the problem that we've got, and I think it's it's really difficult now because this is the problem. This is the problem that we... And this goes all the way back to, you know, I, I'm very in tune with. Like when I got cancelled or when people done a petition about the stuff that I said with my jokes, if you start... If you start telling people what they can and can't laugh at, what they can and can't say, what they can and can't joke about, what's offensive, and and then people start going, oh, yeah, okay, actually, yeah, cancel him and cancel him and cancel him, then the extreme of that is a man going out, committing crimes against a woman, then dressing as a woman and saying, put me in a woman's prison. And because all of this has gone on, they have to go, well, we don't want to fucking offend anyone. So, yeah, pop him in the woman's prison. This is You have to have an element of... Do you know what? I, you can think what you think, but that is wrong. Yeah. You know, we have to be able to do that, but it's very difficult, man. Yeah. If you're born a man, you shouldn't be going, on a, going to a women's prison. You shouldn't be competing in women's sports. You shouldn't be keep competing in beauty pageants. Listen, there's some fucking men out there, women, trans, fucking female, whatever it is, who are stunning. I get it, but they shouldn't be competing with women who were born no, of female. Not. I believe anyway, like for me, it's male, female, and that's all I see the world. And if you want to add to that, I think it's zero point zero six percent of people are trans. And again, I'm listening. You want to wear fucking rainbows and butterflies and wings and do your videos? Listen, I'm I'm happy for you, <laughs> but just don't talk about my children. Don't talk about kids. That like, you see these people, even you see mm. the shit that's happening in Ireland and stuff just now, man. It, 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 the world's 
I feel as if they're trying to get us to accept mad shit. Feels mm. as if they're trying to keep, to, to normalise so much yeah. madness. They're trying to bring the age of consent down. Mm. I ain't for that shit, man. No. I, I'll keep going. And, and, and do you know what the, the what the just sorry to interrupt you. What the crazy thing is, when I was taking when I was making videos, you know, when I called that geezer out, I was like, I was just saying, listen, because he's like, hi kids. I'm like, you're a 45 year old man dressed as a woman starting your videos saying hi kids with makeup on and shit like that. That's confusing as it is. And why you feel the need to be on TikTok targeting stuff about sexuality, sexuality and gender to children. It's just a step too far for me. And the weird thing was I made the video off and, and what's bad is I made the video and I thought, well, oh, this is controversial. Maybe I shouldn't be saying that. I shouldn't be thinking that. I should be able to say what I want to say. But the crazy thing is when I put it up, it was nothing but support. It was everyone else going and especially women going, this is fucking, women are sick to death of men hijacking their spaces, hijacking, you know, things they've been through, like their periods, men going out and buying tampons. <laughs> I know, do you know what I mean? Uh, men going out and buying tampons and going, day 34 is a woman and I just got my tampon for, where are you going to stick it up your ass? Like, what? Yeah. And women, women have had enough of it. Women have had enough of men dressing up as women and coming into, I mean, I've got two daughters and if I, like, I'm, and this is God's honest truth, I've got two young daughters, four and four and six years old and when they go to public toilets, if, if the, the older one wants to go in a woman's toilet I've got a stand I, I don't really like her going in on her own I, I try and take her in the men's with me the, both of them and just use the cubicle or whatever but if I've got to wait out for the for the elder one to go in there and if a geezer was walking up dressed as a woman I'd be like you ain't fucking going in there I'm sorry I'm sorry but you're not going in there no. do you know what I mean Like, and you can call me uh, a bigot or offensive or whatever but yeah I don't fucking care like, no. I don't agree with it like, there's, I've seen a video of an old man in the gym in America and he was using male and female because he identifies as female. So there's, they either get fucking a trans t t change room or something. If you've got a dick, use the men's. If you've got a dick, use the men's. Do you know what I mean? Like, I understand if people genuinely might not have the wrong and bad intentions when they cross over and stuff, but when you've got fucking male pretending to be female, they took the guy in Scotland to rape two women, put the wig on, standing at court with a dick point through his trousers and they're fucking trying to stick up for him to send him to a women's prison yeah, it's some women done an interview saying he's got feelings fuck his feelings what about the fucking victims feelings yeah. do you know what I mean like, and the women need, in the prison yeah, people need to stand up and say fuck them like fuck them yeah, what they fuck, do? Feelings. Exactly. fuck your feelings like, I'm sick and tired I, my Twitter just seems to be full of fucking absolute sex cases Honestly, it's fuck. I don't know if that's the shit that I'm watching recently, but it just seems to be <laughs> fucking filled with fucking madness. And, I've, I, and it riles me up because unless you've got kids, you don't know how hard that is to protect them. And the world's already fucked up anyway. I'm terrified. I'm terrified. You know, I'm, you know, having, having conversations, having to have conversations with my daughters now anyway about, you know, what's appropriate you know and be careful of this and you know because you're leaving them at school you're leaving them at places and having and you know my sobriety my sobriety has definitely made me think fucking hell I can't believe how out of touch I was with being a dad I wasn't wasn't present I wasn't here I mean I was there I was there I was waking up I was going through the fucking emotions but now I've got now that I'm sober I've got all these emotions and I've got all these these fears and like, I'm in tune. I want to be with them. I mean, even being out this late now with the, the sun started going down uh, on the way here, I was getting that could being in town. I, you know, the, I was getting that trigger. I was thinking, I don't like being out. I want to be at home. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But, and then when you mix into that, all of this fucking weird shit and you think your daughters are growing up into it, it's like, it's a scary old thing. Yeah. That's how I, I speak out against the Sam Smith. People call you this and that. I don't care. I'm saying my opinion that it's not. And listen, there's a lot of music with different artists and it's, it's kind of, satanic dark fucking weird shit like you get Christa, Christina Aguilera used to do the think, dirty song and that but it probably doesn't seem as bad because it is a woman if you know what I mean but mm. it's still bad as well because young girls are still watching that as well like the, 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 the thing about the brain it's such a powerful tool it absorbs everything mm -hmm. and teenagers and young kids are looking up to these people as inspiration like I think the numbers are now through the roof like if you're the kids should be protected at all costs and even kids going to school like I wish it, if I had the right fucking mindset then I'd probably homeschool my kids mm. do you know what I mean because you're, they're feeding you don't know what was, the, the daily routine like for a teacher is as well you don't know what they like their background is you don't know who the fuck they are do you mm. know what I mean people are weird I had Sarah Sands on the podcast a nice old man sitting outside the shop doing the papers give the sons a job end up abusing three of her sons the guy was in his 70s she killed him got three and a half years while in prison that doubled her sentence gave her seven but yet there's nonsense on the street 
fucking raping kids, killing kids, and getting lesser sentence. It's unbelievable, it's mate. Scary. It's scary. I think. I think that. Yeah, I think that you know, there's some politicians, there's some people out there that are that are speaking some sense, but majority. The problem with politics, I think, is you got to remember that these people that are a majority of these people that are making the rules or that make the decisions, they want to stay popular. They want to stay popular so they can, you know, they want to stay popular. And if they feel, if you, like, for instance, when it was popular to dislike me or to discredit me or to not work with me, it was like people, you know, they virtue signal. It's like, no, I'd never work with him. And they just say it out loud so people go, fucking fair play to you. It's like the people that make these big decisions, it's very difficult for them to make the decisions because they want to stay popular with the people that mm. are complaining about it. It's a scary old world, mate. How many times are you still on eggshells of what you say and what you do because of what happened a few years back? Well, I'm not really... Because I kind of, I kind of, I've learned, I think I've learned what to say and what not to say and how to say things. For instance, my, my early days uh, as Dapper Laughs, I used to really exaggerate the lad culture in order to, for the shock, do you know what I mean? For, for, to get the viral activity, I used to really exaggerate it. It used to be quite shocking and controversial because that's what would push it. But now I've, I feel like I've got enough life. I've got enough stuff going on around me to talk about without having to do that. Mm -mm. You know, there's I see comedy in everything I do. I see comedy when I wake up with my kids. I see the comedy in my kids. I see the comedy in in <laughs> what's going on with transgender and uh, sexuality and stuff. So I see comedy in everything. So I don't. I'm not there to be controversial. And I, I also know. Um, I sometimes I get it wrong. I got it a bit wrong the other day and I had some people DM me and say, look, I just, I found your, your video insensitive and in the comments, there's a lot of people hating. And sometimes I'll take a look at saying, can I delete it? If it's, if it's causing a, a negative reaction, Yeah. you know, but I won't censor myself if I've got a strong opinion, but if I put my opinion across and then a load of people come in and go, yeah, fuck them, fuck them. Like as a, as a group yeah. of people, then I'll take responsibility yeah. for it. You've got to, cause I'd done that post about, uh, why is men so weak at the moment? And I had a woman who'd lost her son to suicide. She says, look, look, before when my son, when I put my son to rest, she says, eh, you're the bravest son that I could have asked. And that, and that kind of deleted it. Like, mm. I'm, I'm not, I'm, you got mass, to I'm massive on mental health. Like, everything I do is to try and mm. show people that it's okay to struggle, but it's not okay to live there. And it's kind of, I should have worded it better. I was just asking the question. Yeah, so if that, anybody was offended, like fine, I, I apologise to that. But mm. again, men are becoming weaker in a hole as well like, mm. and I'll keep speaking out on that shit and I, and I question that like why is testosterone so low I, I think I think I think I think uh, that men don't have men I think that that's a massive part of it like for instance um the you know when you came to check in on me and you know when you you know there's not many people like you that will fucking call it how it is that's what we need. Do you know what I mean? For you to come and say, nah, listen, things ain't going right for you, mate. You know, you can't do this. And then, and then, you know, I've got, I've got voice notes from you that I was, that I'm going to play when we, mm -hmm. that when you come on my podcast for me, I'm going to play a few voice notes because there's so much, I get so many emotions. Some of them I've starred and I listen back to them myself to keep, you know, to, to remind myself of where I was. You know, they, a lot of them, you will start off when you voice note me, you know, long voice notes start off with, you know, what I'm doing wrong, what you're doing wrong, you know, what I'm good at, the reasons, the reasons why I can't do what I'm doing. And then they always finish on something funny, you know, like keep shagging and da 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 and all this stuff. But men don't have that. Men, a lot, majority of men don't have another man that, that will go, call them out on their bullshit and then look after them when, you know, when they're feeling it. And I think that's why men are feeling it. There's no, you know, in order to, in order to have, get a group of people together and talk about what they're going through, men are like, fuck that. I don't need that. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But, and it kind of feels like a, a admitting you're weak. Do you yeah. know what I mean? But that's the strength. That is the strength. Yeah. The weakness is not speaking about it. The weakness is not doing something about it. The strength is saying I'm struggling. The strength yeah. is saying I need help. The strength is getting your ass to the gym. The strength is... Mm. Trying to better your life. Exercise is the key. The exercise mate. and the, the natural chemicals, cold water therapy. Mm. I was in the fucking the cold water today. Yeah, you're mad. Do you know what I mean? Like because it keeps it's, it numbs the voices, mm. it stops the pain, whatever it is. Like, I've got mm. trauma. It for, just resets you. Yeah, doesn't it? it resets me, and I'm in the now because mm. I'm in, the, in that moment in the cold. I just want out of there. But I know. Wait a minute. This is your medicine, James. This is a natural medicine where mm. I don't need to accept, ex go externally and look for the bad stuff. People can go to the pubs, they can go and watch their football, they can do what they want, but you're never going to find your sense of completion there. It's just a, a constant rage. And I think a man says it, feed them bread and wine, and they forget what life's really about because people, when are skating, there's too much things out there, it's too easy to escape. Yeah, I think if your coping mechanisms make you feel worse, then you're fucked. 
If you're coping me- and it's it's just such a simple thing to say and to and to think about. If your coping mechanisms make you feel worse, then you're fucked. How are you ever going to cope? If you cope by drinking, which makes you feel worse, it makes you depressed, anxious. If you cope by having a binge, I mean, I had it the other day. I was triggered the other day. I had I had a shit week. Something, a couple of fucking stupid things went wrong. A car wheel fucking got cracked. Um, you know, load of little things. And then I was heading up into town on a Thursday, and it was coming towards the. And I thought to myself, do you know what I fucking need? I need to just get fucked. That's what I need. I need to get fucked. But luckily, I'm in this position now where I go, why are you saying that? What instead of instead of my subconscious mind going. And do you know what it was? I was thinking to myself, the words that I was using, I need to escape. You know, I need to just switch off. I need to get away, you know? So what I'm saying to myself is I can't handle life at the moment, so I need to fucking switch off. And how did I used to do that? Drugs, drink and drugs, right? And then when you come back, it's fucking a hundred times worse. Plus, you want to fucking below base level to deal with your shit. Um, and my coping mechanism went from that to oh you can't do that you've got the kids on your own this weekend imagine how you're gonna fucking feel after 100 days sober and then you're looking after your kids and i went you know what i need to do i need to go for a fucking run that's what i fucking need to do i need to do some exercise come back whew, fucking i'm a geezer let's go yeah that's what it's all about see i think drinking around kids is child abuse it's a drug at the end of the day and you're not being the best parent you can be a parent should be taking full responsibility of a life and try to give their kids the best life that they can and by doing that is being there being mm. understanding listen i wouldn't be where i am today if i never fucked up all the years that i've done all the lying the stealing the cheating i've done it all i fucked mm. it all like, people don't even know my story to the extent it'll fucking blow people away like once i go in depth once i'm ready to get a book out like i'm business now at the end of the day i'm just here to create content make some money and have a fucking great life like but nothing the the, the voices don't stop so mm. even though people say oh i can change life you how good is it when you, you've stopped for seven days it's amazing i feel like a new man then 20 days then it's 50 days then it's 120 days life's okay mm. it's not the same buzz as you've got there like the pain's still there and then you think oh what next because we're always wanting more yeah like looking from the outside your life already it seems complete people want a married life they want the kids they want a big house the fancy car yeah. got it all but yeah it was never enough no because you ended up fucking on your ass again yeah yeah you know what i mean it's, <laughs> yeah. it's fucking mad and when i knew you were fucking it is when you started playing golf all the time i noticed all the other people around you were drinking he's not good mm. i said man get your head out your ass today look what's going on oh nothing i'm i can see i remember at the gym you said to me i can't stop now um, I've got a stag do I've got my wedding you're rhyming off all these excuses why you shouldn't st stop drinking mm -hmm. and that's when I know you're gone yeah I was gone but, I was gone and the worst the, 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 the thing is the thing is for me now is you know you have like I said earlier you have to think you've got control and, and see it slip out of your hands in order to know you've got a problem you know and the, the scary thing about going sober is you think to yourself what the fuck am I going to do then yeah. my life's over but the truth of the matter is now that I don't drink I don't want to be in a pub I don't do you know what I mean people are like oh there's some of my friends now that I've been friends with since I was 14 13 14 years old that were groomsmen at my wedding that I don't speak to do you know what I mean the only thing we really had in common was drinking and doing drugs and I'm okay with that because the the ultimate thing is I'm nearly 40 years old I want to be at home with my children being a good dad whereas when I was drinking, uh, that's not what I wanted. I'm just going to be brutally honest with you. When I was drinking, uh, you know, even though I wasn't drinking every day, when I wasn't drinking, I wanted to be drinking. I always thought it was fucking boring at home. I want to be out at a pub. It's fucking shit. It's stressful being around the kids and the missus is doing my head in. I want to be at a pub. Um, and that was my addiction. Yeah. Where now I'm like, when I'm out, I want to be at home. And when I'm at home, I'm fucking pleased to be there. Yeah, but that's what we can get mixed up is between boring and being at peace. So when I'm at home with the missus and the kids and the dogs... No, that's what you said, boredom is good. Yeah, and that's what people need to realise that. When I sit there, I think, oh, what am I missing? People are watching the World Cup, they you know, hear the music in the pubs, but then I'm at peace. It's yeah. nothing to do with yeah, I love it, mate. I'm just at peace. Like, it's fucking, listen, even though we want to do this and do that, sometimes it's not the right thing to do because the missus does your fucking nothing, the, the kids do your fucking head in. Yeah. But <laughs> does that give me an excuse to go and then basically borderline be fucking abusive abusing myself mm. abusing my body and and basically self-harming mm. sitting in dirty toilets taking lines talking shit random kitchens mm. people try to give you life advice when their heads are so far gone but 
You've got to take the reins for your life. And anybody watching, man, things can get better, things can change, but they ain't going to change unless you admit you've got fucking problems. <sighs> yeah, it's fucking hard. I'm not going to lie to you, it's hard, but it gets easier. The first 30 days, 40 days are hard. You're counting days. I stopped count. I mean, I've still got my counter after 100 days, but I thought I don't need to count. And now I don't count. And I'm, I'm kind of like, it just, I know it's always there. It's looming, but I kind of, I kind of feel like, oh, it's getting better. You know, I'm just getting, I'm, I'm getting into life as sober you know I don't miss it and yeah I just I'm never never want to go back whereas before I felt like I did do you know what I mean how's business been since you've screwed the head again fucking much better man much better you know the my film really took off it was it was you know number one crime film on Amazon it looks like it's going into Netflix so I'll be on Netflix I, do you know what the mad thing is and I, I, I don't know if this will fuck it up but the mad thing is Terry ter I made the film with Terry Stone and Terry Stone was like listen they fucking hate you I tried to sell your last film we tried to sell my last my first film fanged up and no one would buy it not even Tesco's would take it because of me name so he said so this one you're going to be called Ricky London so he put my name as Ricky London and, and now they're trying to pitch it to Netflix so you'll see my face but you won't see my name but do you know what the mad thing is and I'm not going to I can't say too much about it but a massive this podcast that has created like first of all the producer of the podcast just a random guy that was in a podcast studio he produces for TV and he's like right I want you to be on this TV thing I want you to be on this TV thing and then a very very famous director that's made probably the most iconic British films of of I'll tell you after of, uh, I'll, I'll tell you after of, of our of, of our growing up you'll know every single one of them they're massive wow. I've got a meeting with him tomorrow uh, not tomorrow on Thursday and he's he's like and do you know how he he found out about me the podcast. Yeah. he's sober he watched the podcast done a bit of research saw that I was acting and he was like right let's have a chat and this geezer's like it's like Hollywood stuff man so. The good karma's there, fingers crossed, you know, there's no more slip ups and da da da. But I, and I'm enjoying being a dad, man. So I think we'll do a film. I yeah. think we'll write something next year. Yeah, let's do it, man. Yeah, I think we'll write something special. Yeah. So the bit of dark comedy. I'm a dark bastard. I love darkness. Yeah. Dark the, comedy. We, we were meant to just have a laugh with this, but me and you, we Hello, we're, darkness, my, my old friend. friend. Yeah. But People need to waking up though. Yeah. Like as, as much as we want to have a laugh and that, the bottom line is people are fucked. Yeah. It's yeah. As simple as that. Yeah. Like, who are you kidding? Yeah. Stop fucking around, man. Like if you're mm. not going to do it for yourself, do it for your kids. You've got to do it for yourself. But if you can't do it for your kids, your mum, or do it for somebody mm. like I'm getting money in now. When I started making money, I thought, fuck it, big car, big house. Fuck yeah. that. I'm here to retire my mum. Yeah. I'm here to build my family up and fucking and, and give them yeah. a good life. And then I'll, I'll buy the nice stuff. I think I think the drink and the drugs for me, um, it done a weird thing to my ego as well because and now I'm sober, I'm getting rid of everything. Do you know what I mean? Like I got the McLaren sat there, that's going up for sale. I sold one of my big watches, and you know I'm all right f for money, but I'm like I kind of feel a bit stupid with all of this fucking shiny shit, and. Um, and like even my missus, you know, my missus has said, you know, like the cars that I'm looking at now are a lot more sensible for the family and stuff like that. And I kind of look back on the last, especially when I started drinking again, this time period where I just felt like, yeah, man, I, I can afford 120 grand supercar. So I'm going to get one. Yeah, I want a 50, 40 grand watch or whatever and all this stuff. And I look back and I think, what was I doing? Who was I? What was what was going on? Like but that's pain. Maybe. Yeah. And I, 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 do you know what I said the other day to someone? They said, oh, someone's come up to me and said, I'm really enjoying your Instagram at the moment, you know, the stuff on your Instagram. I said, well, it, well, now it's honest. I was like, what you're seeing on Instagram is actually what my life is like. For the last fucking however long, you were seeing what looked like happiness and a happy family. And, you know, I was like, this is daddy being daddy. But the gaps in between that was, I wasn't being a great dad. Do you know what I mean? And, and yeah. I was being an arsehole. But now what you see on there is... Reality, I mean, apart from the comedy sketches, obviously. Yeah. The McLarens and that, like you say, you're a father, two kids. Yeah, why have I got a McLaren? Why the fuck you got a McLaren? Yeah. So that, again, is just to say... Well, I've got a small dick in my yeah. defence, though. Okay, uh, me. <laughs> you've got a McLaren. But yeah. see, yeah. Well, that's just life. Like, you, you tend to see that because when we are struggling, we think the big watch, the, the, a wee photo in Dubai, people think he's living the high life. Yeah. They're not really. No. Well, it's all fake as fuck, man. They're I've running been, away from yeah, life. Yeah, it's pain, man. Like... I don't know, but is, have you ever came across anybody that's happy? I have not. 
Uh, I, I, the only people that I know get that get a real true taste of happiness are, are people that that are on their sober path. Really, I'll be honest with you. You know, like Kirk, for instance, he 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 has elements of happiness, but he struggles a lot. But I think I'm the happiest that I've ever been. You look good. Yeah, your eyes are clear. Yeah, you're not bloated. Yeah, you could tell, couldn't you? Yeah, you can tell the fatness and that. Yeah, the you beer. I'm on the booze now, mate. Fuck it, that's, my that's eating, just the though. chocolate in it, mate. Eating, mate. But that's one thing I can't give up, mate. I have chocolate just before I go to sleep in bed, mate. I love it. It's bad. That's why that I can't get. Fat. I can't get rid of that yeah. little bit there. How are you getting on with the boxing? Because I seen you training. When you, fucking, did you have a fight? I'm on, KSI mate. Thing? Yeah, I, I was. I was signed up and everything. They were just about to launch. We were just talking about it. They were just about to launch my fight on Misfits. Um, I paired up with a guy called Christian Hamby. Sent me the contracts. I signed mine and everything. And then uh, he pulled out just as we was about to go live. Like I, I think I was, you know, I was looking too good. What month? It was. Well, it's this one, isn't it? It's, what was that? Yes, yeah, this one is coming up now. But <sighs> but I think it's a blessing in disguise because KSI ain't on this one. You got to be on the one. Where KSI's on, yeah. you know what I mean. The rest, fuck the rest, don't it? Yeah. If imagine if KSI, Jake Paul, you get on that undercard, mate. Fucking you, 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 thirteen year olds all around the world are going to know you. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be doing TikTok videos with fucking makeup on next. <laughs> <laughs> how, tell me, talk, how's the message doing? Dealing with all. Yeah, is good. she thinking it's just another? No, no. Is um, she thinking okay? I've, 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 I've I feel really bad talking about certain stuff like, you know, about talking about getting nicked and stuff like that because I'm trying to keep her out of it because she doesn't really want, she she obviously gets a lot of people talking, DMing her and that and she's kind of stepped away from, because, you know, she was a model and stuff like that and um, one thing that she she hadn't done that she needed to do for herself was because I, I was doing the right with money, she, for the last fucking nine years she ain't had a job and I think it was driving her insane, you know, it was just my career and my life and everything and she was sat at home, you know, while I was out fucking Playboy lifestyle and that. Mm. So, one of the things was when we got back to after we had or oh, whatever happened uh, she went out and she got herself a job and, and then she's fucking flown up the, the ranks in this job she got a fucking promotion in the space of like a month she's living her own life doing her own thing she's very happy we've got stuff to talk about at the end of the day but she, uh, she says she started saying to me over the last sort of four or five weeks you're looking good I'm really proud of you well done you know I had, I, she went away to Amsterdam probably shagging this weekend but, uh, <laughs> I had the kids all weekend and she she was texting me, you know, I, I stayed off the social media as much as I could. I'd done maybe two or three videos of me and the girls um, doing something on my story, but I, I stayed off, you know, and I, I really had a great time, really had a really good time, just me and the two girls over the weekend. And she come back, she gave me a big, big kiss in the cut and said, I'm so proud of you. And, um, Sorry, that's making me a little bit fucking, but that, that stuff makes me, um, that stuff makes me realize sort of how, much shit I'm fucking hell sorry mate that's okay bro that stuff sort of made, makes me realise how much shit I must have put her through with the drink and the drugs and that to see how happy yeah. she is now so but that shows you how much she loves you yeah but if you've not got her I'm going to be honest with you man you're probably dead yeah mate I think so do you know what I mean sorry bro. that's okay man this is what it's all about it's to show the pain it's to show the struggle but it's also to, sh to show that we we don't need to pretend do you know what I mean that yeah. you fucked up many times yeah, she's yeah. still there but she, you're obviously there for a reason do you know what I mean like every, yeah. whether it's soulmates or people there like, because like, even my missus now, even if she, the guy we working in that I get over I overthink I'll mm. post more because yeah. I pretend oh, and then I'll they'll try and phone her or maybe not answer it yeah and then I'm thinking but I want to speak to him but I want him to know that I'm not missing him so yeah, they miss weird. me it's like mind games you play mind games like how do you deal with your missus in that way like because me as a man I struggle mm. my missus I think oh she she fucking many dicks is she sucking this <laughs> the mind goes yeah no I, when I was when I was drinking and using I was paranoid I was bad I was really bad and that's what caused us friction you know what I mean I, would, I was paranoid and bad the drugs and the drink really used to send me send me west like my ADHD would come back and um, you know I'd say well, sorts of mad shit but in all honesty honest truth honest truth you know she went up she she got on the plane on the friday night and we spoke maybe twice while she was away and i was completely fine i'm fine i'm um you know put it this way if she ever wanted to leave me <laughs> fuck me she's 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 at it you know what i mean we got married she's getting off of everything anyway do you know what i mean if she if she wanted to get married and jump ship mate she, fuck trust me a couple of months after the when she had the fucking choice she um you know I went away, done, done, done work on myself, you know, and come back and, you know, she, um, 
you know, she she was there and she was like, right, let's see if you can do this. And, yeah. you know, a fucking fair, fair. I mean, it's not just because, you know, I'm good looking and stuff like that and I'm wedged up. She actually likes me. <laughs> You've got a McLaren, then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Once that goes, mate, she may go. She's always spent the money, man. I'll I'll like me. What, um, what scares you the most? Oh, um, my, I don't know. I guess my... Um, uh losing control again i think and um yeah uh my kids opinion of me uh when i'm when, and that's what's motivating me now um something bad happening that's what scares me you know to how i deal with something really bad happening you know because at the moment the last 120 days is it's been all right but nothing's happened do you know what i mean yeah but seeing you're on drinking drugs you don't really care if you'll ever die well basically because you're, you're self-harming anyway seeing you become sober you become more sensitive to the environment around you mm. i'm always aware anyway i was always aware even when i was on the sniff i was always in control with situations when you came off it you realize wait a minute like because of the people i interview as well i know how fucking dark the world is mm. it, it might seem like a beautiful place some fucking man with the kids in the part and that but you don't know if mm. he's a fucking nonce as well like I, I'm mm. constantly on guard with my kids that are 12 and I seem I, I've, I've, I'm more fearful and worried about shit now I'm sober you're right I'm more in, you feel everything and you see everything I mean you know just the stuff that, you know like my eldest daughter you know her being a, slightly aware of you know when I'm not quite with it do you know what i mean are you all right are you how are you today daddy and thinking fuck me she's so in tune imagine if i was drunk imagine if i was angry and da 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 da, da. Mm -hmm. so i think i think what scares me the most in life is what them girls are going to think of me in you know when they're older and that's what's keeping me motivated to to just be good when are you at your happiest when i'm on my own with them at bedtime i think just before i'm putting them to bed if they fucking manage to calm down but yeah i think when it's me and them and my wife lying in bed and the dogs and it's just about to go to bed and I know that I've dealt with a day. I don't know. I think so. Yeah. My then a mixture between then, then and when I come up with saying, well, funny. Mm -hmm. What do you think your dad would say now? Oh, thank fuck. Yeah. Yeah. My dad would, um, my dad uh, knew it was getting bad fucking in 2017, you know, just before he died. My dad said, you're drinking too much. Um, but, you know, um, I think I think my dad would. Um, uh, he'd be proud now. Yeah, because I'm proud. I always say I'm proud of you. And that's it. I remember my dad dying. I whispered in his ear. I'm sorry. He's seen me. Oh, fucked. He's seen. Imagine dying. And seeing your, one of your kids at his worst. Yeah. And my dad did, yeah. I was full of weed. I was taking Valium. Like, my dad died. I told a story, actually. My dad, that's a fucked up story, mate. This is so fucked up. This is how my mind was then. My dad got diagnosed with leukemia, right? And it, it, it was in uh, remission. Then I get a phone call. He used to get bloods every week. It came back. He said, look, you've got three months to live. I just started smoking. I was a fucking loose can. Plus, I was gambling. Like, fuck, I was doing bad things to feed my habits. And my dad was in the house basically dying. And when he used to go for meals, I used to just stay in my room, smoke joints and gamble. And then, obviously, three months comes. It was like four or five months. He, he, he dies. Dies on the couch. <clears throat> and I've got all the family around. They're all grieving. I'm grieving. And uh, my, my young nephew is fucking... He get murdered, God rest his soul. But we were smoking joints. Yeah. All the family all went out we phoned a delivery but my dad knew the man from the delivery shop so i was pretending to be my dad my dad's in the couch dead <laughs> the undertakers have come in and fixed his body he's lying in the couch like that i pretended to be my dad and says to him, look mate if i don't answer the door just came in just came in and i uh, take the money so my dad's lying like that in the bed i put the 20 quid in his hand mate and the poor bastard's chapped Are the you door joking? Nah. So the guy had to come and take it off yeah your dead yeah dad? yeah the guy's chapped the door we're hiding in the kitchen he's come in mate we're looking through the slat in the doors mate and he's he's pushing my dad's oh, body oh, <laughs> God, Tim, Tim, I'm here. and he's took the 20 pound left the pizza in the floor and fucked off are you joking? Door, not. Listen, it was either that or paint his face mate 
mate, I had to do something, man. So <laughs> poor, poor bastard took the 20 quid out of his hand. But my head was fried, mate. But what, did you do it for a laugh? Like, I think so. Our nerves are just fear and everything. So he's lying there. But did your man have a sense of humor? Oh, yeah, I think, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going straight to hell. So he's fucking lying there, dude. I put it, we ordered delivery. It was a kebab pizza. It was like 17 quid. Oh, I, I said, just take the, that. take the full money. The guys came through the door. I mean, he's, he's Jim, Jim, and he's giving him like a wee shake. He's fucking all frozen stuff. He take must have fucking known. I don't think he does. The mate. fucking thing is, what about the fucking delivery driver? We could have called an ambulance or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, took the twenty quid, mate. And fucked off. Oh, mate, my my mate, I was I was drunk and everything when my father passed away as well, and I can remember I was oh mate, it's mad the things we do, isn't it? In yeah. those situations, it's like we go into hyper normality. It's mm -hmm. like you're trying to be normal but over the top normal. Yeah. My dad was on a um life support machine and uh he'd had a stroke and that and uh my phone was dead and i wanted to do some social media you know i thought i'd get a picture selfie with him on the thing so i was pulling out plugs and that and alarm started going off <laughs> i'm not even lying yeah. and the doctor come around you can't pull plugs out in here that's on your dad's yeah. machine you know but i wanted to get on snapchat at the yeah time. so that the method that's how i know one was deranged mm. that's not normal family laugh about it some still take it a bit personal but that's fucking all right. Do you know what I mean? That was just the way I was dealing with it at the time. I thought, make a joke out of a sad situation. Mm. Maybe not the right but, moment. No, but but but, but it's the, you know your mental health was fucked. Yeah, you, bad. you were got you were gone. And the good thing about the body and the mind that does repair itself. I'm all about trying to understand the mind and rewire yeah. it. But I just think there's so much there's so much information out there now. Mm. I can go on TikTok for three four hours watching mad videos about aliens and underwater yeah. fucking worlds and the moon mm. and I'm thinking what information am I getting it? Get, getting that? Yeah. Is my mind, is it just non-stop as well? So I need to be careful that mm. what I'm consuming because you are what you consume just as much you are what you eat and you are what you speak. Yeah, I think that I think that one thing I've learned through sobriety and doing these doing these podcasts, especially with people like Robert Heise that does the unconscious mind therapy and and people is is that you know and this guy that I was talking to he, he wrote a book Alcohol Explained and he was he was very much like your 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 subconscious mind and this is what I think I done with when I was triggered the other day is. You know, something bad happens, da, 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 or something good happens, whatever. There's a there's a pattern of events that happen, and you go, oh, I'll have a drink. You know, you get back from work, you put your bag down, you sit down, you turn the TV on. You know, it's like the mood is quite dim, and you're like, oh, I'll have a wine. You know, the, the alcohol fits into things, and it's your subconscious mind goes boom, boom, boom. Same as when you go to a pub, and if you you're with a certain group of people, you have a few drinks, you have the packet, you have, someone will make the call. You know, and it's like everyone at the same time goes, should we make the call? Should we make the call? Should we make the call? So the habit kicks in, and a lot of people that are scared to go sober because they don't they don't know if they'll ever be able to stop thinking and doing that. It 100 percent fucking changes. At the beginning of my sobriety, every Friday and Saturday, I was getting fucking triggered on the lead up. I was getting triggered. I was. But once, it takes about 90 days to reprogram your, I don't know what the correct word is, like the pathways, the neurological pathway. Yeah, it takes 90 pathways. days, 90 days to create a new habit, this guy was telling me. So if you can last 90 days of like religiously getting up and going to the gym, 90 days of not drinking, pass all them weekends and everything, then those those triggers those neural pathways are different and and you know you won't those triggers become less and less and less and like now it doesn't really it it doesn't unless something happens in the week really the weekends come and go for me now do you not worry for your kids with social media yeah i do especially if they see the shit i've been posting yeah <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> what does the people i was showing my girlfriend the the video and i don't know if it was a voiceover or what but your your, your daughter was doing that the gymnastics or something you're just shouting no you know kids are shit <laughs> you know the kids are shit we're going to the Olympics yeah. and I think your missus was telling you to shut up man yeah, I was yeah. myself laughing. yeah yeah well what I, do, I got loads of flack for that but what I done is she was doing her gymnastics and I was just videoing and I just went babe babe and she just turned around and went like that but I cut that bit out and put over because look when I went babe all the parents turned around mm -hmm. but yeah I've always started going your kids are shit we're going to yeah, fucking yeah, Olympics yeah. fuck yeah, off yeah, you know yeah, yeah. but yeah you know that was extreme stuff but I find that really Really funny, yeah. I'm, I'm funny, fucks. The other I done with my dad, yeah. <laughs> my, my humor's dark, mate. I tried, I tried stand up comedy, man, and it's yeah, 
I just felt as if every comedian I came across was nuts, man. Yeah. You kind of different. You you become a different character because you sold out the O2 there talk about yeah. that. Like, what were you? Because you weren't in a good fucking place then. Like, we no mm. felt pressure. No, I'll tell you what the mad thing is. All my big big stand up shows, I was fucked. Like my the Troxy show. Do you know this is the mad thing? The tr uh, I was sort of going on and off sober when I'd done the Troxy the Troxy is about 3,000 people or something like that sold it out massive show uh, called Good Vibes Only it's all about how I become positive and positive thinking and i done uh, oh, it's like it's a month till the show do you know what I'm going sober till the show because I want to be firing on all cylinders because I, I, I planned this whole bit at the beginning where I'd take a camera the guy would have a camera with me and I'd be walking around talking to the audience and the camera was projecting up onto a max it's a huge venue a massive screen so it was and I knew everyone was going to be off their nuts so I was pulling people up off there I was like alright mate what's your name and they were like Fucking. and it was hilarious and I had all this stuff planned but I needed to be firing on all cylinders to be able to, to do that level of audience interaction and control a crowd that big you have to be like oh, sharp and like or, 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 kind of like fucking dominate the audience um, so four weeks before the show I decided to go sober so I went sober I was over in Spain was going sober and all of that all the way up flew over the night before and Chaz had come to the fucking hotel the night before and we got on the packet and done an all nighter that night before and he left and I got in a fucking taxi on the way the daylight the birds fucking going still off me now on the way to the venue fucking going what the fuck have I done with my life and then I can remember here like, I had to stay in there all day doing the rehearsals with the fears and trying not to fall asleep because I've been up all night then I had the crowds coming in terror was there somehow I smashed it it was a great show check that self-sabotage yeah yeah I don't know what that is but me and my counsellor talk about it because like same as my wedding same as my wedding and the birth birth of both my kids after my kids were born I went out to wet the baby's head and fucking went the craziest I've ever fucking gone it's weird it's fear self-sabotage fear you're not yeah. good enough fear that you're going to fail fear that <clears throat> fuck it before it gets fucked yeah. yeah because it's all going to get fucked anyway but it's not really because even when we talked about you being cancelled, I said it was you that cancelled yourself. Yeah. Like, fuck everybody else. No mm. matter what they say now or do, like, they can make, say what they do, what they want. I don't fucking care anymore. Mm. I'm just at a stage, I know how hard I work. I'm just trying to do the right thing. I'm not trying to be controversial, but I've got to say, say how I you feel. feel man, say what like, you feel. Yeah, you've got to. Yeah. And listen, that's why your audience like you. That, and that's what I'm finding with my podcast people will find him refreshing that we're talking like we're talking now you can't you can't connect with real people out there without talking about uh, without talking real without talking about real things you know how do you think all these men out there that are similar ages of us that are coming up what's happening is they've spent their year, the years of their life enjoying the party like I did going out at the weekends partying 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 and then the party turned into oh well do you know what this is a bit shit during the week I'll have a bit of that a bit of that and suddenly now they've got a family kids and a business or responsibilities and the party should stop and they don't know how to how do you explain expect them to sit in front of a doctor or someone that's never been there never been through that and take advice from them they can't they need people that have been there been through it are out the other end of it and trying to cope and trying to find ways to stay like that that's what they need what about longevity how do you stay in the business and still survive because of you've got to recreate yourself now, constantly 10 years 15 yeah, years you've just got to recreate so you've got to move with the times man like you've got to keep moving with the times I didn't want to go on TikTok because I thought I'd fucking it's a bit noncy do you know what I mean I'm 38 years old I thought but I'm nearly a million on TikTok now do you know what I mean and, and plus the content's got to stay relevant and you've got to just know your audience I think you know just entertain like for instance I don't do jokes about shagging birds no more because I ain't shagging birds do you know what I mean I'm really Leave that to me <laughs> yeah. okay, then my missus will shoot me <laughs> nah, but, yeah. nah, you know I'm doing jokes I'm doing jokes about you know political satire or about my kids because that's what it is you've just got to be honest with your comedy do you think comedy's changed yeah man people are scared but that leaves a great opportunity for people like myself to to fill the gap you know what I mean why do you think people are so scared to speak out cancelled man but I've seen a lot of people speaking out now I go oh good on you people I never thought I would see you speaking out yeah, but you've got to look at what they're speaking out on and, and, you know, it's one thing speaking out, it's another thing being the first to speak out on the subject. Do you know what I mean? If if people are speaking out on something, is it something that's becoming popular to speak out on or are they speaking out? But cancelled for me is like what they've done with Andrew Tate. Cancelled for me what they've done with Tommy Robinson. Just take all their platforms away. Yeah, that's You never bad. had that, did you? No, because, because I don't know. No, because, you know, you have to be, cons you, it's weird. You have to be like grooming uh, I don't know how they done that. I don't even know how they managed to do that when it wasn't even... I don't know how they managed to justify doing that to Andrew Tate. 
you know? I done it. I know personally, man. Like, we speak quite frequently. I've met, like, I've met, you know I mean? I've met him before. Yeah, I was one of the first to have him on the podcast, and I'll have his back, man. And people give me shit for it, but I think you guys innocent. Listen, don't get me wrong. If you've got seventy five girls working for you, there's got to be an element of control. Hmm. But he genuinely is a respectful guy. He genuinely is a kind hearted man. Like, and I'll hmm. say that publicly. I've said it many times. And I had him on the podcast. That's an act. Hmm. A lot of the stuff what he says is powerful, and he. And he, and he it directs it perfectly mm. for people to listen because as human beings, as men especially, we're looking for guidance. He was a mm. man to guide them. Listen, he's no convictions. He's strong. He's a multi-millionaire. Mm. Like, he's a good father. Like, he's got so many great positives that we can look up to. But yet, we've got Sam Smith that's pushing mm. us down the fucking yeah. road. And I'm not... What's a better one? It's, it's very difficult. The Andrew Tate situation is very difficult, especially like my, my missus. She's seen all the negative stuff. So she, you know, she says, you know, you better not support and all this stuff. And I'm like, right, well, it's best, best we just don't even talk about it, babe. You know, I don't want to get into it because... I, I can relate to a lot of things. He said some dumb shit. He said a lot of dumb shit, right? Which I, in turn, have also said a lot of dumb shit. But also, I try and do good and say the right thing. But are you not going to listen to the right thing I've said and keep on bringing up, you know, people drag up people's past because they got nothing on who they are now. Now, he has said dumb shit in the past and stupid stuff in the, st the past, but a lot of the stuff that he says towards men, I think, is what men are fucking lacking. That positivity. Go out and fucking work out. Go to the gym. You know, deal with your problems by trying to better yourself, you know. You know, if you want to get over a, if you want to get over a woman, go and make yourself successful. The problem is... Women these days, and this is very true, I've experienced it myself, women these days and, and feminism has got to the point where even being supportive of other men pisses off women. You know, even trying to, I mean, I set up that group, men and their emotions. We've got 30,000 men in there that are all talking. The amount of fucking women that try and join it and we've got to say, no, you can't join it. They've got partners in there and stuff like that. And the amount of messages I get, when are you going to set up a group for women? Why do you only care about men? I'm like, I'm a fucking man. Do you know what I mean? I don't know what women go through. Mm. I'm trying to help men. Um, and that's where it's got to, unfortunately. And he was trying to spread a positive message to men on such a big scale that he became a huge target. But saying that, he has said some awful shit as well. Yeah, of course. But that's, I don't think he realised how big he was going to get. Yeah. When, you, when you're doing that shit for attention, because he knows what he's saying. Do you know what I mean? He knows he's going to get bites for that. He knows he's going to tr cr create controversy. But for me, hopefully, will he get out? I genuinely don't know. I've just seen a video of him there getting moved prisons. And they they, they stayed they've, silent. They've, they've, they've really yeah. kept him in, haven't they? They stayed silent and they looked fucking drained. I don't know if they're... We don't know what's happening behind closed doors, but... That's the only time we'll tell. Listen, if he does get found guilty, I'll be the first to say, look, okay, well, I hmm. apologise, but right now I've got his back, man. I'm not going to hide away like a lot of people. And that's the sad thing. But even for men, like... I don't know, man. It's like, why do, do you think that might sound weird for people? But do you think because we speak about mental health so much, it's then created people to then struggle more with mental health instead mm. of case of back in the day? Listen, fucking man up, toughen up, just got on with it. No cunt cares, no cunt does care. But do you mm. think because we speak about it, because it's an old time high, something's think, not right? Yeah, I think I think it's difficult. You've got to have the right message. Like, I think, I think there's a happy medium, and sometimes even I can get it wrong. I think I don't. You know, just saying, look, you know, people struggle, everyone struggles, you know, if you're down and depressed, you know, you need to admit it and stuff like that. You're, you're, the way you say it is right. What, what we need to be saying is um, you need to look for the answers, the reasons why. If you, you, you know, you can't complain about being depressed down and your life's going shit if you're abusing drink, drink and drugs. You just can't. I was doing the same thing. I thought I was suffering heavily hard with mental health and problems and stuff like that. But no, it was addiction, you know? So, Work on your addiction, work on, on cutting out the drink and drugs, then have a look at your mental health. And then if you're still struggling and you're not exercising, then look at that. Yeah. And if you're exercising, you're clean and sober and you've still got issues, then go and seek help. It's not like the gear I used to snort. I had a drug smuggler on, he was saying there's rat poison, there's petrol, yeah. there's cement. You don't even know what you're sniffing. Fucking acid, like uh, tires that mm. cause cancer. Mate, like, yeah. Pff, and we worry why we're struggling. Mate, fucking hell yeah. I used to fucking, you know, you know them ones where you sniff and then you're sick straight away and then afterwards you can't talk for 45 minutes. Yeah. That ain't gear. But it's the proper that came out. I just stopped. Proper probably been out in the rough seven, eight years. I, well, for me in any way. And I kind of stopped after. But I, one gram of that, man, you're tuned to the moon for at least 48 hours. You're gone. Hmm. I was always the last to leave, always, because yeah, there was me something too, in yeah. me. I didn't want to go home. I don't want to go home. I don't want to party in because my life's sad. My life's miserable. I don't ever want to go back to that, mate. Like, you know. Um, it it's was... mad to think that we do that. 
Yeah, <laughs> looking back record, now, isn't it? It's fucking that psychotic behaviour. You should be in a loony bin. Mm. That why sit in a house full of random people sitting with your top off talking shit. <laughs> It's fucking nuts, mate. It's right. like a fucking gay festival. It's yeah. a sausage fest. It's a, I always you know, think everybody's shagging this and that. You're just sitting with random guys talking pure shit. Yeah, you've got your shirt off talking about fights you ain't never had. Yeah. Murders you've never done. Yeah. Banks I, you've never robbed. Yeah, I, t- I, t- I, t- I told someone I knew very well that I'd done fucking proper time in prison. <laughs> and the next day I woke up, I was like, I ain't never been to prison, mate. Like, he probably knows that I ain't never been to prison because yeah. I went to school with him and I've seen him fucking every couple of months since. <laughs> but the guy's like, mate, that was mad. What was it like in there? I'm like, yeah. Fucking, yeah. But why did why does it as for a meal? Why do we go that low? Why do we stoop that low mm. in our life that we don't love ourselves enough that we have to do Just that looking, shit? Because we don't get praised, mate. To be honest with you, you know we don't men men don't get praised, and uh, men don't. Uh, I think this is a big part of it all. I think this is a big part of why men feel low and worthless is because it's got to the point now that everything that we've got to do is just considered standard. You know, to get yourself to a position where women like you, you know, fit, healthy, looking good, you know, earning good money. I mean, how many men out there do you know that are really earning really good money? There's not a lot of them. There's not a lot of them. Right. Um, And even if you get even if you manage to get yourself a half decent house, a half decent wage and, you know, you're getting yourself looking fairly good and you're holding your shit together. Does anyone say well done? Does anyone say thank you? Does, does, does your does your wife you know you're you're providing you're going out working you know you're either working too much sometimes and not spending enough time with the kids or you know you're at home all the time and not working enough it's very very difficult for men to get appreciated properly and I think that's a problem yeah that's sad as well isn't it because but even men we like to tear each other down yeah do you know what I mean like, I, I, fire, I fire shots back I love it yeah do you know what I mean like, I've left quite a few I've left and re-entered a lot of my mates friendship groups you know where especially when I was using yeah so it's, it's the photos and the videos and everybody getting slaughtered like in Glasgow especially like no matter if, you, if you're doing good or bad you're always going to be a talking point mm-hmm. and that's the sad reality that like, it's not that people are bad that people just don't want to see you doing better than them yeah. and if they do this they, they feel inadequate they feel as if they're not good enough and then they go back in their shell for me i'll go wait a minute i'm going to work harder than i'm yeah. like success leaves clues yeah it's good you know we should you know we don't give each other presents at christmas we don't buy each other gifts quick gifts uh, for birthdays and do cards and stuff like that because we're men we're geezers but Instead of that, we should, you know, I'm, I'm quite lucky. I've got, I, you know, I've got a few good, really good mates that will see I'm doing well and will message and say, and um, that are supportive. And we've got a group where we put in our little, you know, I've done this. I've just got this job. You know, the other lads, you know, Chaz is working his ass off. We, we like to tell him, you know, I mean, he's fucked being Chazza for a day because the geezer yeah. don't know what's going to, you know, he's finished a job and he's, he, he's finished one job, you know what I mean? And he's meant to go on to the next one and he gets confused and goes back and, and, and he, he, you know, he's fucked in the head. Mate. Yeah. So I don't know how he does it, but he's managing to build that business and he's turning over some money. So we make sure we tell him, well done, good day's graph, brother. Do you know what I mean? Well done with your business and, and we do that with each other and I think that's really important. How can we help men in this society for your end? What, how what would you think should be in place for, to help men? Who are struggling? Just stuff like the Andy Man's Andy's Man's Club, I think, is good stuff. I don't know. That's a difficult one because there's a lot of stuff that's that's out there. But I don't know. Men just need to be men more and be around men more. You know, yeah. without drink and drugs. I think the only way we know how to socialise is down the pub with drink and drugs, mm-hmm. and that's negative. It's destructive. We need yeah. to find ways to socialise more without that. Yeah. See, I was always for it's okay not to be okay and speak out and you can be sensitive and you can cry listen you can mm. but you can't keep doing it you keep yeah. repeating that same cycle it's only going to lead to yeah. death man like, yeah. you've got to dig deep man you've got to find that strength you've got we- to find that courage to then I'm going to change my life because you don't need to sit in silence especially but again you've still got to come to the conclusion that no cunt cares Yeah, as much as you would love to like I'm doing well I always want to pat in the back but then again I think what for yeah. just get fucking on with it yeah What's you're right do? but I, I think I think maybe if they could you know like I knew, always knew that doing drugs was bad you know I, I wouldn't want to do heroin or you know I thought that certain drugs were bad but certain drugs were alright and booze is okay and um, you know I, I don't know why it took me till 38 to realise that I was I was I was on a fucking constant merry-go-round I was happy five minutes and fucking down for 24 hours happy five minutes and 
there needs to be more in education, I think, you know, how exercise really does help, how you can be in tune with your thoughts and negative thoughts and how you can train your subconscious mind not to do the same thing over again if it's negative and what will really happen if you drink at excess. You know, need, uh, the kids need to learn that shit. Booze is the biggest killer. Yeah. It's the biggest killer out there. But yeah, we glorify it. Mm. We glorify it. It's, it's weird, everywhere. Man. People don't want to stop drinking because, it takes you know. pain away, though. Yeah, but when you say to someone, when you go in a pub and someone goes, you want to drink? And you go, nah. And they go, wow, what's wrong with you? Mm -hmm. Well, you got a problem. It's weird. It's the only drug people think you're weird for not taking, isn't it? Yeah. Everything else is kind of... The alcohol one, like, I don't explain myself anymore. I'm never in a pub anyway. But when I go to events and stuff, I'll say no. And everybody seems to be fine for the first hour. As soon as a couple of pints kick in, as soon as a couple of wine kicks in, it's loud. It's asking about guests. It's, oh, what are you doing? Or this or that. And you think, fuck off, man. Yeah. Like, I don't surround myself. You'll never find me in a nightclub. You'll never find no, me no, I drinking. Can't be, I can't like, think of anything worse now. Like, it's just, for me, that's low vibration. That's low energy. And it's, I've been that life. And when I talk about weakness, like, I was weak for so many years. Now I'm confident. I, I take a bit of pride in myself. Like I know there's still a lot to work on. I believe I've been. I believe in my forties. I'll be in my prime. I believe I'm only mm. starting. I've always says that. I believe everything that I've learned to unwire and rewire and just try and see the world differently. Everything I'm learning is going to click. Mm. It's going to click this year, next year, and then I'll, I'll, everything will, will make sense because mm. I, the eating clean is massive as well. Like I want longevity. I want you're slowly learning is, about yeah. everything, but it's hard. Like even just even just cutting out the drinks and drugs is hard. And then when you start going into it, like too much caffeine, eating better, managing your thoughts, working out. But that compounded effect of slowly, slowly progressing and also just being confident in your own skin and being happy with your own fucking, being happy in your home, man, being happy with your own, like I love my time to myself now, being happy with yourself. And I think I needed drink, drink and drugs to be around other people, man. Like, yeah. do you know what I mean? I just was like, I think that's why I don't like being in a pub or in big groups of people now, because I'm like, I don't actually want to be there. Yeah. I needed the drink and drugs to turn me into a bit of a twat to get involved. Yeah. You know? But that's the scary thing. People need it for confidence. Yeah. But if anything, it takes away your confidence. Confidence, I can walk in any room and I walk my hair tail tie. I walk anywhere. Always proud, always mm. I'm a, in a confident place. Like I don't need to be hiding. Mm. Don't shy away. I've never broke over the last five years I've been doing this. I've never brought a forward. It's a couple of pricks that was spoke shit and I fired a couple of videos back I always defend myself at yeah. the end of the day I ain't a fucking idiot I ain't yeah, a mug I like, yeah. do you know what I mean because I I try and speak a bit professionally I ain't a fucking mug like, yes, I, know, mate. Totally I know mate can anybody ever put it on me I'm always doubt forward mm. never run away from my fight in my mm. life well, I tell a liar once I get fucking punched in the, in the tunnel nightclub years ago and I got fucking ambushed and I fucked off other than that I've never <laughs> I've never uh, he, had, yeah. he, he can't lie he yeah. was like just in case some people yeah, are yeah. listening and the <laughs> you're lying bastard yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> One time in, yeah. in the tunnel, I was out at man, and I thought, "Fuck this, I'm off." Ran across the bar and stuff. But other than that, yeah. I'm a big fucking unit. You yeah, you I mean? are. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. want to fight. I Love hope they it. don't try and match me and you up in misfits because I wouldn't have it. <laughs> so, talk about the fighting again, like yeah. let's, first of all, foremost, I want to say I am proud of you. Thank you. Oh, you've always got it in you. You're always going to do well. You're always going to be successful. Mm. You're always going to fuck it, come back. But this time seems different. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But like, this time seems different. Like, yeah. I don't ever want that phone call again mm. to say you've, you're have you on a come down or you've fucked it. Yeah. Because the scary thing is, we look for that. We look for the answers. Mm. I was giving you the answers, but you didn't want to know. Yeah, I was I was in a really bad way when I rang you. But you look, I had to go through that pain, man. And I think, you know, I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm, I, I feel like I've admitted. And I've, and that's why I don't mind talking about it now. And I think it's healthy to talk about it. I've admitted I'm good. Um, the I like pushing myself now and you know the 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 boxing i spar three times a week and the boxing's great scary, for me it? it is scary and, and that but i mean the gym that i'm in yeah. they don't fuck about they make you properly spar yeah, yeah, like yeah. proper you know three three or four i mean when i was training for, uh, for the fight recently i was going up getting up to five six rounds do you know what i mean mm -hmm. and you know by the by the by the fourth or fifth or six right you're fucked but i mean i mean proper fighting full-blown um sparring and it's one of them ones you're driving there in the morning really early in the morning you're driving there and you're like i don't want to do this and that's why i do it i want to get comfortable in those extreme situations and I think that's what's great about the cold water challenges is being in there and wanting to get out but overcoming your thinking I think is very similar to sobriety do you know what I mean if you can overcome that thinking yeah, you know I think there's power in that and um, I think the boxing any sort of combat it <sighs> yeah do you know what it turns you into a man yeah it does yeah I, I love mean, it you, you I need, like getting hit and I like, I like fucking it's scary because when I was I trained for the fight last year at the O2 
I thought I was training hard. I blew after the first two minutes. Yes, I was fuck. doing eight rounds of three. Yes, with the so nervous energy, man. Trying to be tight. calm, you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. The manly shit. I wasn't because I was nervous. Scary, I get knocked out. It's I was fighting a fucking ninety-five kilo monster. Fucking. Hmm. It's scary, mate. I don't care what anyone says. I don't care what anyone says. Sparring, and if you're sparring properly against people that can box, sparring is fucking terrifying. But what, when you're in the mix, if you can think under fire, you know, if you can behave, if you can, and that's what I love, that I, you know, and I'll tell you what, there's nothing better than walking out of that ring and them saying, fucking, you had a good fight there. Yeah. You think, oh, I fucking knew I was hard. Yeah, I yeah, fucking yeah. knew it. You it's know, the one up. Yeah, like yeah. How, how, once yeah. you start actually, I'm, 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 I'm at that stage now where my movement, like I can, I can anticipate. Yeah, I can anticipate shots. I can duck. I can weave. I can bob. I can move from shots. I mean, you're not getting it right all the time. You're getting, but when I'm eating shots, I'm staying composed. Do you know what yeah, I mean? So like covering away, lifting yeah, a leg and no, shit. No, oh, that was the. You yeah. do that, didn't you? Yeah. You lift the leg. <laughs> yeah. You lift yeah. the leg to cover your tummy. <laughs> I go get your leg down. <laughs> That's what my trainers go. We trying to do. Have a piss. Put yeah, your leg yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, but no, I'm um, like, you know, you ex ex expecting the pain, expecting the shots, taking the shots and staying composed and also firing under fire. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that takes a long time to learn, you know, getting getting the body shots and the fucking severe headshots and still putting your work in because mm -hmm. it takes months and months and months to not take them shots and get the fuck out of there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So working under fire and, um, you know, I just had a, I've, I, well, I had a few days off because my missus was in Amsterdam and um, I fucking got a pain in my back and I had maybe four days off and I went back in uh, this morning for the first time and fuck me did I feel it I, I knew I could feel just that four days out of the ring yeah. the, the, the flow the confidence had gone and the, mm -hmm. so but I'm fully addicted to it so what do you do now then what's your daily routine for people who are struggling looking for answers like what do you do differently I get up before everyone else gets up I get up I'm I'm up at silly o'clock I'm up like 4.35 o'clock in the morning just naturally anyway but if not set an alarm and work on I work on myself for an hour before anything else I have to so I write my diary any negative thoughts that I have got in my head there's always stress so I get it out and just fucking agree that it's not that stressful um, and then I just stop planning my day mate I plan every, I plan my whole day what content I'm going to create what I want to talk about where I'm going to be and I make sure before my kids get up I get my exercise in so my kids their first view of me every day is I'm oh, coming in, I come in, I'm like, woo, daddy's here, what's going on? I'm ready for the day, do you know what I mean? And they get that, first of all. And I do the school run now every morning. My missus has got a job and um, uh, I get, get my school running. So I get my taste taste of being a dad and get the school running. I come back and then and then I'm ready to be dapper laughs. That's life. That's living. I love it. Do you know what I mean? Like It becomes repetitive mm. and it becomes, whether it's boring or in peace, it's, it's great. the best way to be. Yeah, I feel, and and that's what my, that's what Shelly is, my wife is proud of, me doing the school run and keeping my fitness and losing the weight and not drinking. She ain't proud about the house, the McLaren or, or the money. I don't mean fuck all, because she was with you before you had you, and you're yeah, on your ass. Yeah, you're yeah. not driving a TT or something? Yeah, 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 still all right though. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I said, I'm fucking proud of you, but just before, we'll get another five, ten minutes just for... Just for people who are struggling, we'll try and get a bit of guidance how to get out okay. of that. I don't know all the answers, but I can only speak from where I've come from, what changes I made, mm. and that was taking full responsibility and writing it down. What I've learned is even though when you're writing the negative thoughts down, don't keep them, bin them, okay. because you're keeping them there. And the universe, so the universe doesn't know what's real or what's fake, whether it's positive right, or negative. Right, get rid of it. Right, get rid of it. You've I've burned that and it's done. Okay, you've, you just kind of... You're facing it and it's done, but keeping them there, the universe is thinking, okay, you're still thinking these, you're still thinking these, mm. you're still thinking these. Doesn't know once it's one, because if you write something down, it becomes 60 to 70 percent more chance at happening. So if you're writing the negative shit down as well, it's, important. it's like you're affirming it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So that's why, with I am a compulsive gambler, I thought, no, I'm not, I'm, I'm recovered, mm. like, I'm nearly five years, like, I'm, I'm recovered. I don't know what's around the corner, I'll, I'll cross that bridge if anything ever happens, or I hope not, mm. but. I just know that like, for people who are struggling, write down what you're struggling with. Mm. For me, it was drink, drugs, gambling, womanizing, overweight, wasn't happy. So I wrote down, I eliminated everyone. Then I, I get seven days and then I get 30 days. I remember hitting a four month mark and I thought, wow. <clears throat> and then I started seeing the world differently. Yeah. I realized everything I'd learned, everything I'd done in my life was wrong. That wasn't right. Like, I love my friends. I don't really, I, the ones from the past I hardly ever see. I've got two close friends, my big friend Barry and big pal Jamesy. Um, but you, when you go through changes, it becomes lonely. So for anybody that's listening, it's a, such a it lonely is, journey. Is, yeah. like you've got 
everything externally from the outside, but it doesn't mean you you've got completion. Yeah. It's, like, a it's a very long, it's a very lonely journey going so mm -hmm. and, and and I think I think um, sorry to interrupt, you, James, That's but I okay, think um, I think be prepared to face face some shit, man. Like the clarity, the clarity that you get from sobriety is scary. You know, you think and feel everything again, and I think that you go through a phase of fucking. I, I went through a horrible phase of oh my god, I did that. 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 And uh, you go over things a little bit, and then that kind of filters out. And now I'm like, oh my god, I'm doing this. Oh my god i'm doing this and um yeah. just on the on the writing down stuff something something else i'm doing that uh, my missus does you know she must think i'm weird but i bought a big jar off of amazon massive jar and every time something good happens to me i write it on a bit of paper and i put it in the jar and it's in my office and i look at it now and it's starting to fill up with all the good things and I don't know when I'm going to do it, but it's since New Year's I, Eve. Yeah, New Year's Eve. Yeah, I saw it online and I'm going to go back and look at it. But what is quite nice about that is when I walk into my office, I can see a jar full of all the good things that have happened. Mm -hmm. And some of them are little things like, you know, my missus saying that I'm sexy or, um, you know, you know, when Neve's tooth fell out or something and she, you know, it's things that she said to me, or it could be work stuff, opportunities that have come, you know, getting back on TV or da da da. But it, it's nice to focus on the positive things because it's so easy to just focus on that. This bad. is what I'm saying. You you bring so much positivity. Yeah. Whether it's back in the day, whether it was really a fake or it was an act, it doesn't matter. You were still bringing positivity to people's lives. You're making people laugh. Mm. Selling beer, you're bringing misery into people's lives. Yeah. And always says this with Conor McGregor. As soon as he started selling the whiskey, Kinds, things kind of started to spiral. You're right. Yeah, that is weird, isn't I mean? it? Because it's like the universe sees the universe, it. Uh, listen, but he drinks and that himself probably doesn't see that. But for me, that that's why I couldn't take a sponsor on because I feel as if, mm. would I want something? It's why, calm. Me and you talking about this and then someday Friday night buying a fucking keg of beer that I'm promoting. Yeah. And nah, then, it's, yeah. You know what I mean? So you've got to bring it into the universe because this is all a big game. Yeah. This is all a big game. Affirmations, I'll go over in the morning. I am good enough. I do love myself. I am happy. I, I, I firm it in my mind. I'm, mm. like, I'm in a good place. Sometimes I don't do all that. I know when I don't do it. I know when I don't walk the dog in the morning. If I don't do a bit of meditation, I kind of a bit fuzzy that day. Kind of eat a wee bit yeah. more. I kind of sit and watch yeah, you can too feel much it. TV. So it's not always going to just because you stop the bad things it doesn't mean your life's 24-7 all rosy especially right. if you want to achieve I'm constantly trying to achieve and raise the bar yeah. and have fights and boxing matches and fight in front of food and have a big podcast yeah, push yourself yeah, push yourself you know what I mean but it doesn't mean my pain's away mm. but I just fucking know I can handle the pain more yeah I think my life changed and people's lives out there will change a lot more when you start working on yourself it's as simple as that mm -hmm. work on yourself you know like the stuff you said to me I, I, I tried to listen to many times and um, you know men don't work on themselves especially you don't work you don't a lot of men don't work on themselves and that's one good thing about social media that I, you know I follow a lot of inspirational people and I see stuff and if I see something that someone's saying that this might work to make you happy or to make you feel good I try it, you know, like the cold water stuff. I know the exercise helps, but I'm working on myself. I know I'm working on myself. I'm working on my mental health. I'm working on my well-being. I'm working on being a better person. Don't give up on yourself. Yeah. For anybody watching that's maybe in the struggle right now, what advice would you have for them? Um, talk to someone about it, man. Like, you don't have to go to a professional. You talk to someone about it. You'll be surprised if you just turn around to your, your wife or your other half or a friend and say, I think I've got a drink or a drug problem or a gambling issue. It'll be like a weight off your shoulders. Once you say it out loud, you can start start fixing it, I think. Would you ever have any more kids? Um, when the missus is ready to shag me again, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, she's she's a career girl, career woman now, so I don't know. I don't know, but um, I'm up for it, mate. That terrified me before, but now... Relationships are hard as well. Yeah. Like people think, oh, I'll get a relationship. Well, I love my missus and that, but we're work in progress. Yeah. We have to talk. Like communication is key. Like mm. if you're coming into your relationship and I'm coming with thirty years worth of fucking trauma. Yeah, yeah. Two kids. Yeah. Like I'm coming with a lot of baggage. Mm. People might say, "Oh, he's doing well or this." Don't mean fuck all. Yeah. Because what happens is when you, uh, when, what I realised when I was in a new relationship, all trauma would come up. This mm. is the first time I've actually spoke about it with someone and we've addressed that and we work at it and. We've kind of pushed yeah. through it, and this is probably this is the longest relationship I've ever had. Yeah, you've got to, and I think I think listen, we don't do it enough as men. Like, look at yourself, look at what's wrong, man. Like, the the best thing that I've done in the last year is is admitting how much of a prick I can be. 
you know and there's 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 relief from that you mm -hmm. know so. where do you go for the future brother give me your future plans <laughs> do you know what i can't believe i cried man what did we say when we were walking funny over podcast, let's happy make it podcast. funny let's have fun but before we go um i want you to come on my podcast yeah, when i can when i can nail you down and from the bottom of my heart i just want to say thank you for for being there when i've called and thank you for um coming coming and finding me when you could see i was falling i love my brother you. love you mate and i'm proud of you thank take you take care